Hi everyone. Let's go ahead and get started with the transfer labeling for multi-class image classification. In previous lectures, we have seen a binary classification. We have seen how you can build convolutional neural network. But we were seeing some problem with our models, like sometimes our model was overfitting and sometimes our model was kind of the underfitting. But now we are going to see how you can fit your model with the best accuracy without building a convolutional neural network. So in this lesson, you will be learning how you can transfer the learning of your model, learning of some other model into your machine learning model. So basically, we will be importing some weights of machine learning models from some other task to our task so that we can expedite our training process and we can also improve the accuracy here. So how this transfer learning works? Suppose that you have two data set, data set 1 and data set 2 and these data set are trained on machine learning model 1 and machine learning model 2. And if you take these as single examples, then you will be saying this data set is trained only for this particular model, but this data set is trained for only this particular model. So these data set are not trained combined there. But in case of the transfer learning, what happens once you train your model with the, with, with the first data set, then what we do, we import the weight of first machine learning model or you can say just the knowledge of first machine learning model to the other machine learning model and then we also feed the data set too for the training purpose. So what happens when we make our machine learning model at the start of your machine learning training process your models are initialized with the random weight in the traditional machine learning algorithms. But in transfer learning case, what happens? Your model initial weights are initialized with the previous machine learning models weight from which we are importing into our machine learning model. So with this, what happens? Whatever the knowledge this previous machine learning model has already learned with the data set one that it can utilize in machine learning model two so that it can classify these data too with more accuracy here. So these are the machine learning models which are trained with the millions of the data set. Suppose that if you have just a few thousand of the data set, probably you should import the weights of these machine learning model into your machine learning model so that you can get the learning from the other 1 million data sets or other million data set on which these kind of the machine learning models are trained here. So some of these, almost all of these are large machine learning model, large deep learning model. First of all, in initial days like around uh, 10 years ago or somewhere around 2014 and 2013, uh, uh, around, the, around that time these models were there, where these models had less number of the parameters and also less accuracy there. Thereafter, as machine learning models and deep learning models evolve, then it keeps increasing their number of accuracy. Uh, it keeps increasing their the accuracy and along with that, the number of parameters also increased here. But in these models, you see there is a model which is known as efficient net model. These model, nowadays these models are the best model because these model takes less number of the parameters and gives the maximum accuracy here. For example, if you take these parameter, the, these models like Inception, ResNet and NashNet, all these models have very high number of parameters but their relative accuracy is lower than the efficient net. These are the latest model. In our case, we will be using VGG16 model. VGG16 model was developed around the 10 years back and uh, we will be taking VGG16 because it is easy to implement since this is online lecture. Uh, it would be easy for you to implement a simpler model first and thereafter once you gain some expertise in deep learning transfer learning models, thereafter you will use any of these models with for your model as well. All right.
These transfer learning models are very widely used in the computer vision and natural language processing task. In computer vision, we use generally these kind of uh, models to import their weights and in natural language processing we use the transformer models like BERT, Digital BERT, ExcelNet and like these uh, type of the models. For our current task we will be using TensorFlow FLARS data. These TF FLARS data have uh, these many of the classes, total number of uh, classes. It has uh, total 15 classes. So we will be having almost 218 megabyte of the data where it has almost 3600 uh, training samples. Out of these training samples, we will be also taking uh, testing samples or validation samples as well. So these 15 classes, we will be trying to classify for a given image what will be the output uh, class for a given image. We will be using TensorFlow dataset. In previous lectures, some of the previous lectures, I have been talking a lot about the TensorFlow dataset. So this TensorFlow dataset is actually a place where you can get almost any type of the dataset, a public available dataset on the TensorFlow dataset. It is very easy to use. You can simply download the data with its dataset name and you can store it on your local system. Let's go ahead and search here TensorFlow dataset. All right. You just search here TensorFlow dataset. With this, you will be here coming there TensorFlow dataset. Then click on the catalog. So here at the catalog, you will be seeing you, you will be seeing all kind of the dataset. All right. You can take any type of the dataset from here. I have already finalized here. So I need TF underscore flowers. So this is the data set which I want. If you click on this, you will see there this data set have 218 megabyte and total number of examples. We have 3670 uh, examples. That's the flowers case. Total number of classes are here five. Actually, I'm sorry. The last time I told you that total number of classes uh, 15, but there are total five number of the classes only. So five number of classes we have there and out of those five number of classes we have here, you see, we have roses, tulips, we have sunflowers, we have dandelion and then we have here daisy. So these are the five type of the, uh, uh, the row, five type of the flowers which we want to classify for a given images here. You can also click on here, uh, explore your data set. So you can click on this visualization, then it will lead you to know your data set TFDS with the Google. Then you can explore your data set into a more uh, uh, for more depth knowledge. All right. If you click on anything, it will tell you that the labels on which it is added there and so many other parameters about this particular about this particular image, like the size of image and uh, other properties of this image there. All right, so I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just going back there so that I can get the name of this TF flowers. So to use this TensorFlow dataset TFDS, you need to import TensorFlow as a TF and then t TensorFlow dataset as the TFDS, then import OS. And we are also importing some other necessary libraries here, like the Pandas, NumPy, Matplotly, PyPlot and the PyTorch. Before we get started, you need to make sure that you have selected here runtime hardware as a GPU because here we are going to train our model on the transfer learning. So it cannot be trained on CPU. In fact, it can be trained, but it will take a lot of time on CPU. So for that purpose, you have to have here GPU for a faster training. All right. After connecting the GPU runtime, I'm running this cell and it has successfully imported the TensorFlow dataset. If you are using Google Colab, then TensorFlow dataset comes as automatically installed package there. You do not need to install TensorFlow dataset separately. So this is already there. So don't worry about that. You don't need to install. Let's go ahead and read our dataset. Thereafter, we will move to build our baseline CNN model. And thereafter, we will build our transfer learning model. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, collapse that one. Thereafter, I'm just going to put it into a full screen mode so that you can see it properly. And I'm also going to add here a few more cell there. 
I get I, I I'm gonna get here the data set like uh, in previous examples I have been reading the data set like this you need to write here the tfds dot load and thereafter you need to give the data set name if you remember the data set name was tf flowers I need to store it so click control and the s I'm pressing here it's gonna store our data and uh, it's gonna store this uh, whole thing okay all right so seems like it is disconnecting i do not know why the the this is disconnecting okay so this had disconnected i need to run it again here i just ran it again and uh, it's just gonna import everything then i'm gonna click on here data set is equal to the info tfds dot load we have here tf underscore flower so this data set is going to be downloaded and the default location will, will be here a root directory in that tensorflow data set and the name of the data set where it is going to in, in, uh, where it is going to store there one more thing here we are missing it seems like it do not have enough value to impact unpack because here some of the parameters we are missing here i'm going to say that with info is equal to true that means we also want the data set information that will be stored there thereafter i also want it to be uh, downloaded as supervised so i say here as supervised is equal to the true so as supervised equal to true that means it will download the image and their respective labels as well so it will be the input output combinations together because we need to train our model as a supervised learning there once you have all these let's go ahead and explore the info variable so this info variable have all the type of the information for data there you can see the name of the data and version of the data here and some description of the data overall here it says that this is the data set size here and the number of classes it says their total number of classes is five since we have already selected as supervised is equal to the true so it's giving us the result in the form of the image and the label so the first one is image and next one is its label out of five number of classes available there so you can get the classes something like this i'm gonna say here uh, class underscore names is equal to info and thereafter inside that i'm gonna just give here the features info dot features and inside that i'm gonna give here label and thereafter i'm gonna give here names so this one is going to return the classes names which we are having with our data set if i run it i'll be getting the classes name but before that let me just copy this whole thing here in fact this small thing so that the later on i can uh, uh, refer this for your reference I'm just going to comment this one and uh, I'm just going to run it. Now it says that we have here dandelion, daisy, tulip, sunflower and roses. So these are the classes we have with our data set. These are the five classes. Now this data set is already downloaded on, uh, on your uh, environment here on Google Colab. But this data set is stored as the TF record or TensorFlow records. So that TensorFlow records we cannot visualize directly. And uh, it's a, a little difficult to understand your data and its directory. So, for, so just to make your task a little easy, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to download this whole thing on this local PC. I'm, I, I, I mean to say that on this Google Colab, whole thing as the image or as the JPEG file so that you can visualize your data as well. So for that, I'm going to iterate over your data set. So I write here for I and then example in enumerate all right so this enumerate is a keyword which is used to enumerate or iterate over any data set so i'm going to write here the data set inside that i write here data so inside this data set i need to give here actually the split name so split name was there a train split all right so this i have given split name as the train split here so i get here for i example in enumerate data set train so i am iterating over train data set thereafter i say here image label is equal to example all right so you see there equal to the example so what happens here if i write here equal to the example that is why i told you that i need this one for your reference 
these examples are already in the case of the something like this it, it is managed as the tuple so the first one is image next one is label so i'm reading these in two variables so i can simply uh, uh, this variable is all automatically comes into image and this variable automatically comes into there another label which is which which, which is label itself now I'm going to store these data inside our current working directory. So I say here as a save dir. So this save dir is going to be the current directory. All right. So this current directory, I have this data set named as a tf flowers. Thereafter forward slash. In fact, I have thereafter train. And then inside this train, I'll be making five, five folders there. Dandelion, Daisy, Tulip, Sunflowers and the Roaches. So this I'll be making here uh, dynamically based on the selected class name. All right. So I do here format. And if I put it here a label just for your reference, I'll, I'll show you. You just see here print save underscore dir and then break then you see what happens here well so what do you see here you have tf flowers train and here this number two is coming you know so this label is stored as number actually so 0 1 2 3 and 4 it's like that so these class labels are stored as their number numerical number so the classes are stored as numerical number i need to convert these numerical number into the class name so for that i need to tell here class name and then its index value if i do like that then you will be seeing there now we are getting here tulips there all right now we are getting the flower name there so this is the folder where we are going to store all the tulip images and then uh, and then inside dandelion we will be storing all the dandelion images and similarly for other flower type there let's go ahead and create a directory so i make here os dot uh, make dir inside that i'm gonna just create this directory save dir thereafter i say if it is exist if already if this if this already exists then do not worry and do not throw any error and if i run it you will be seeing here inside this tf flowers train and tulips are created so all the tulips are gonna store inside this and other flowers are gonna store inside their respective labels thereafter i'm gonna create here a file path so what will be the file path here you see so this file path will be here this save dir and then there would be a plus forward slash because you know all the images tulip images will be stored here so i'm going to put the name of tulip images starting with the tulips itself so for that purpose i need to give the name of those image and that i need to make sure that it is dynamic so i will make it something like this then i will say it is as format and thereafter i'll make he, make it here jpg so what happens here if you print this file path now you will see there you have tulips and tulips.jpg so all the tulips will come inside this but there is the problem every time we are giving here a same file name so every time old image will get overwritten with the recent image so for that purpose i need to give here index of the image as well so i'm going to take this index from here so that these cannot be overwritten so if i put here i now now you should be able to see here the index of the images now tulips 0 in the next iteration it will be the tulips 1 tulips 2 something like that so there is no chance to override the previous image once all these things are done then i'm going to use here keras preprocessing tool to write keras keras uh, preprocessing tool to overwrite these images on your uh, uh, disk there so I write here tf dot keras dot uh, preprocessing dot image dot 
save underscore img and then I write here file path and then I write here image dot numpy it is something like this and then I'm just gonna you know comment this whole thing and thereafter I'm just gonna wait for some time so that it can finish the download of the data all right so all the images are download here and uh, you can see all these images are downloaded and their respective index one more thing you see there these index numbers are not continuous all right it is because these index are coming continuously but maybe these folder paths are changing because of the changing class names so we have all the folders here teji dandelion roses sunflowers and the tulip folders there all right so all these cases you can get it here once you have downloaded your data then you can visualize your data here itself you can double click on any of these data you can see there we have here roses all right you see there all these are roses images here thereafter if you see in sunflowers what you will see there you have these sunflowers cases there all right so all type of the roses are included there we have to make a very robust system to get a high accuracy for a classification all right all right so we have successfully downloaded our data let's go ahead and get started with building transfer learning model we will be here seeing vgg16 block and we will be also building here baseline cnn model so that we can compare the result what we get with the baseline cnn model and what result we get with vgg16 transfer learning so here is architecture of vgg16 model in vgg16 model there are 16 layer of convolutional neural networks and the dense layer if you see there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 16 so there are total 16 layers are there all right so these, that is why it is known as vgg16 so so in vgg16 you see their image is given and then a feature is extracted through the series of convolutional neural network of these image and then these layers works as the classifier at the output and then finally at the output layer a particular object is detected there you can see here this architecture as well here like uh, you can see the shapes of the images in vgg16 default shape of the images are 224 by 224 three channel image then there are two cnn there and each of these cnn are having 64 filters thereafter other three cnn uh, one two actually there are the two cnn then other two cnn are having here 128 filter and then other three cnn are having here 256 filter and then other three cnn are having here 512 filters and so on and these red colors boxes which you see those are max pooling and then these these uh, aqua colors are fully connected dense layer with the relu activation function and then at the final we have softmax in previous lectures i told you when you have two classes to classify then you use sigmoid activation function in the last stage when you have a multi-class classification then you have then you use a softmax activation function at the last stage let's go ahead and build the first two layers of the convolutional neural network for, so that we can make sure that these works as the baseline convolutional neural network so the first of all we need to import here necessary python packages so from tensorflow dot keras dot preprocessing dot image import image data generator so this image data generator we will be using for the data augmentation and also we will be using this for the reading our data from the from the directory thereafter from tensorflow dot keras dot layers import now we need to import convolutional neural network layers and other deep learning neural network layers so this is two dimensional limit we we, we need here convert 2d and then we need here max pooling 2d thereafter we need here 
flatten layer then we need here dense layer and then we need here drop out all right so these things we need to build our model thereafter from tensorflow dot keras dot models import sequentials all right so we need here sequential uh, functional api as well so that we this sequential can contains all these neural network layers in a single box there so this sequential works like a container which will contain all these uh, layers in a single container and then we can do the model compile and the model train with the help of this sequential okay so let's go ahead and create our data generator so i do here data gen is equal to image data generator and inside this i need to first give here some of these parameters first of all we need to give here a parameter like what is going to be the rescale see our images are rgb image and image is represented as 8 bit numbers so maximum number for 8 bit binary is 255 so our image pixel range varies from 0 to 255 but in deep neural network generally we give values in between 0 to 1 so we need to rescale it to 1 divided by 255 that's mean we are doing here normalization or feature rescaling thereafter this is after this rescale we are gonna set here the validation split why this validation split is required here as i told you earlier that our cats and the dog data do not in fact we are dealing with the tf flowers so this tf flowers data do not have a test split it has just a train split so for this train split we have to get 20 percent of the train data as the validation data itself so that we can test the performance of our machine learning model thereafter i'm going to introduce here some augmentation to our images i write here rotation range is equal to 10 that means it will be uh, left or right kind of random 10 degree rotation there and thereafter I have here width shift in that I'm gonna say width shift is 0 0.1 that means a 10% of width shift can be done and similarly height shift range also can be done 10% in fact this one is range here all right thereafter we are gonna do here a sear range is equal to 0 0.1 that means the 10 percent of the sear range and then we have here zoom range at 0 0.1 and then we have here horizontal underscore flip is equal to true so it is also going to randomly uh, do a horizontal flip once you got once you get your data generator then you can get started uh, uh, taking train generator and validation generator so i write here train generator that's mean now we need to generate data for the training so that we can do with the data gen and subsample of the training so i write here data gen dot flow from directory because our data is stored in a directory named as tf underscore flowers so this is our data and uh, we are gonna set here the target size is equal to 224 cross 224 so this is the target size that's been the input size for each of these image we are gonna set input size as 224 thereafter i'm gonna write here the best size and here the batch size i'm going to write here uh, 32 batch size so that we can do a faster training thereafter here class mode so since this is multi-class problem so i need to tell our algorithm that this is categorical class mode so i write something like this we have a multi-class problem so class mode is categorical and then we have here a subset is equal to training so this one we are doing for the train generator so same thing we can copy and then 
we can paste this same thing with the validation here. So if you write there the validation set, it will become there a validation subset. So I write here validation and then it becomes here validation generator. If you run it, now it will tell you that there are 2,936 2, images which belongs to one class and then there is other images which belongs to other class. Okay, so the problem is here, I gave just T of class. In fact, I need to also give this path as well because that's the source there. So I need to give this train and then forward slash train. So thereafter, it will take all these five uh, uh, classes there. Now it says that we have five classes, 2,939 images. It, it these will be used for the training and these will be used for the validation. So we have got our data generator. Let's go ahead and build our base model. We will be building here a base model with the help of the VGG blocks. So we are going to build here the first two blocks and these two blocks. So first four blocks we are going to build VGG networks first four block and then we will evaluate our model performance on these first four block of the VGG network. So I write here create base model. All right. So I write here model is equal to sequential and then model dot add. If you see there, we have their convolutional 2D in the first layer. In the first layer, convolutional 2D have total number of 64 filters and kernel size we have here three. If I just provide here 3, it automatically becomes 3 by 3 kernel size in 2 dimensional vector. And then I provide here activation is equal to ReLU. I say that 3 because you can also write it something like this. In both way, it is actually the correct method. Alright. So, but I am going to just use it here as a 3 for simplicity. So, 3 by 3 uh, filters are there. Activation method I am going to use here ReLU. And the first layer of convolutional neural network must have input shape. So I pass this parameter input shape parameter, which becomes like 224, 224 by 3. So this is the image size, a three channel image. We have 224, 224 with the three channel here. Thereafter, I write here model dot add and then I write here convert 2D and inside that I, again, I'm going to write here 64 filters. And then again, I'm going to write here three by three, uh, the kernel size, the filter size. If you see that the first two are having here total 64 filter size and their, uh, uh, their uh, kernel size is just a three by three. So that's what we are using here. So we have 64 filters again, a kernel size is three by three and the activation method is ReLU activation here. So these are the first two layer of our, uh, these are the first two layer of our uh, neural network. Thereafter, a pooling happens. Now you see a pooling is happening there. So we are going to do a pooling there and it is almost the half. That's mean the two by two pooling is happening there. So I write here the model dot add and then I write here the max pooling. Inside the max pooling 2D, I write here a two matrix, I mean just two, so it becomes automatically two by two max pooling. After doing all these, now you do not see any dropout kind of the regularization. So we are not using here dropout then in any way because we are just simply copying first few blocks of the VGG networks. We are also not using here any kind of the batch normalization, which we had used in the previous lectures. We are not using in this because just I want to make sure that our baseline model is matching our VGG 16 model. Thereafter, I just copy this whole thing from here again and then I paste it here because in the next layer you again see there, there are the two convolutional neural network layers are there. All right, so I write here again, they, but, but the filter size is 128. So I write here 128. This I have been telling you previously as well. As your neural network becomes deeper and deeper, you starts increasing here number of the filters. So these filters says that how many feature maps you, you how many feature maps you have in your network. And uh, rest of other things will be same. I need to remove this input shape 
because this input shape you can pass only when your convolutional neural network is the first layer of your model after doing all these we have here these layer these layer now you see in the next layer we do not have the dropout this comes into the third layer uh, sorry in it, this comes this 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 is the max pool actually so this max pool we do not have in the second layer so i'm just gonna remove that max pool from there and then i'm just gonna add here a flatten layer so i have done just here the model uh, uh, the flatten layer so it's going to flatten every results as a single vector like we had seen previously after this flatten then i'm gonna add here a dense layer so a uh, model dot add and then i add here the dense layer and then 512 neurons are there and then i write here activation is equal to relu all right once all these things are done let's go ahead and build the final stage of our model in the final stage of the our model we have a five classes total five classes that means we have to have here total five dense layers so that we can classify our neural net uh, our uh, uh, image data into one of these five classes what we are seeing here one of those five classes are here so that we can classify as daisy dandelion roses sunflowers and tulips there so i'm going to add here the model dot add and then i add here the dense layer thereafter i'm going to write here a pipe cell a neural cell with the activation method is equal to softmax this part i have been also telling you earlier that if you use a single node in the output then you use a sigmoid other than that you use the softmax activation function once all these things are done you can just simply run it now you can see your model is uh, built there although there is no error we can check that error after doing the model compile so i write here the model dot compile and in that i write here the loss method now again here i'm going to make a little difference what we did earlier in previous lectures in previous lectures we have been using a binary cross entropy since we are using here five classes now we need to use here categorical cross entropy so i need to write here categorical cross entropy so this is the loss function for our multi-class problem statement and then for optimizer i'm gonna use here adam optimizer with default parameters and then the evaluation matrix i'm gonna use here accuracy so this accuracy will be used as the evaluation matrix let's go ahead and compile your model once you compile your model it shouldn't throw any error model compilation once model compilation is done then we can start training our model in fact we can also see the summary of our model seems like we have ran out of uh, uh, space here and uh, for that what we can do we can reduce the batch size while generating this data seems like we created uh, some problem i mean uh, we took larger batch size now i need to reduce this batch size i am taking here batch size as 32 but i think i should take a batch size of 16 only so if i take a batch size just 16 only and i run it our code again thereafter i need to build our model once more so the model compilation is being done again now it shouldn't throw the any error if this throws any error even after setting 32 batch size i have to restart our uh, i have to restart our notebook here so I'm just going to restart and uh, so that I can free up the memory, restart and run all. I needed to do that because, you know, uh, initially that memory was already reached to the 13 uh, gigabyte of GPU RAM. So our notebook didn't have much of the space to load our model. Now it has again set to the zero. Our model will start building from the scratch now and it should be able to now accommodate 32 batch size of the images there i'm just going to wait for some time so that model uh, compilation can finish well so model has successfully compiled compiled here and we are having maximum gpu to 13.7 uh, gigabyte so we have enough space to train our model now 
let's go ahead and close these resources and uh, we can also see the model summary so that we can know that how many parameters we are going to train for our model so i write here model dot summary it will tell us the model summary here it says that the total number of parameter is going to be 736 million parameter this is kind of the huge parameter and it will definitely take a lot of time to train our model but anyway we have a gpu so it shouldn't take much of the time to train our model i'm gonna store uh, training history in a history variable and then i write model dot fit and in that i pass here train generator and i'm gonna train i'm gonna uh, 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 train it for five epochs here and i'm also gonna give here the validation data as the validation generator so that our model can also do accuracy validation on validation data here once all these things are done i'm just gonna simply run this model training so it will again it will definitely take some time we have to wait for some time so that it can finish the training as soon as i started my training it has thrown the error seems like some problem is there so what problem I need to say? It seems like some input incompatibility problem is there. Let me just see what problem is there. So seems like we have loaded our input shape as the 224. That's the size. But that problem is here. I made here 244. That's the problem. I need to make sure that it is 224. That's the problem here. If I run it again. And then we have 224. Okay, seems like that's all. It will take a while to build our model and uh, in the compilation as well. Again, you know, uh, I just changed something in our model and it again has gone out of the resources. So this problem will keep happening if you try to run multiple times a same model. So now what I can do here, uh, instead of taking this batch size to 16, I can make this batch size to just 8. So this will make sure that this doesn't happen if we just run it multiple time. Okay, I have to do this again, restart and run all because uh, this has gone out of resources. Now we are taking here batch size just 8, this shouldn't do right now, again here. All right, wait for some time so that it can come and it can start the training. Okay, so it has uh, it has compiled our model and seems like it has also started training our model here. Epoch 1 out of 5 epoch, it has started training. You can see the RAM size here. So seems like 14 gigabyte of RAM is already full here. Once again, some problem is there. All right. Uh, this seems again here OOM out of uh, you know the memory error is getting created here well this is some problem I mean this is huge problem this is not able to handle uh, this data I have to adjust our model here seems like I have to again reduce our uh, total number of uh, batches here so I can make it even four. So these, some of these things are actually you can achieve only by doing testing here. All right. So I'm making it four again. Thereafter, I'm going to do here restart and run all. We have to wait for some time again so that the training can start here. I'm just going to wait for here some time. Okay. It has again come to here and it has started the training. I need to wait some time so that I can verify that if training has started. Well, it seems like this problem is occurring again and again. We are we we are running here uh, uh, out of space every time it starts this training. So, what are other things even after this batch size which we can uh, we, which we can adjust here? So just to, you know, uh, here we have a huge number of the parameter. Just to reduce this number of the parameters, what we can do here, we can add this max pooling after this, this layer as well. So that at least we can save some, uh, uh, 
save some uh, at least we can reduce these number of the parameters there all right just make sure that you remember this we have 736 million parameter after adding this max pool we have now almost you know almost like one third of the parameters here or even less than that now this number of parameters are reduced here drastically or probably it is like one fourth of the parameters so these number of parameters are reduced now by it is one fourth let's go ahead and run this tra uh, training of our model again and seems like training of model has just started so seems like these number of parameters were going out of our memory that's why it was actually uh, uh, going out of uh, out of memory all right so seems like we have encountered with the another problem with our model fitting and uh, it's not doing well so we need to stop our model training and uh, we have to make some changes in our base model now this time what i'm going to do i'm going to add here a dropout layer as well so that our model can start learning so i'm just going to add here model dot add and then i add here a dropout of 0.2 percent that means the 20 percent of the dropout and after this max pooling 2d layer i'm going to do here a 20 percent of the dropout after this dense layer i'm going to do here a 50 percent of the dropout let's go ahead and build this model again do remember by adding this dropout doesn't change number of the parameters now you should be able to get the same number of the parameters like we are seeing here okay so seems like again here the memory exhaust error has happened let it be no issue and previously we had these resources anyway so i need to just restart our runtime and run all i just need to do thereafter we have to keep an eye on our model training well so seems like model training has started now now we have to wait some time so that model training uh, can finish all right so our model training has been done for five epoch and seems like validation accuracy is 68 or 69 percent and training accuracy is 66 percent so still our model is underfitting you can train it for more number of epochs to get the better accuracy but before that i mean instead of training it for multiple epochs we are going to do a transfer learning so basically what we will be doing here we will be transferring weights of vjg16 model to our newly made model so that this initial learning can be fetched directly from the vjg16 model because the vjg16 models are already trained on a million of the images so what your so what your these images does here so these type of images are being used here just to uh, i mean the the these uh, initial layer of uh, convolutional neural networks are being used to get the image features so these image features if we can extract directly from the vjg16 weights then we do not need to train our model for multiple epochs and we would be able to get the better accuracy all right now i'm gonna build here a vgg16 model one more thing you see in a vgg16 model if you see all these so these are input layers and these are the top layers so these top layers i do not need to include because in the top layer these networks have 1000 object classification but in our case we have five object to classify so these top nodes we have to add our own node for these top networks and for these lower type of the networks we do not need to train our model because we don't want to change the feature extraction techniques for the lower uh, for for these uh, uh, layers here now what i do here i need to first get the weights of the vgg16 model so i create here from tensorflow dot keras dot applications import vgg16 all right so here we have 
tensorflow.kras.applications import vgg16. Thereafter, I write here model dot vgg16 is equal to vgg16. So this vgg16 model we are taking from the Keras application. So at the Keras applications we have other pre-trained model there. If you want, you can use the vgg19. You can use the ResNet, you can use the efficient net, mobile net, so many other type of the networks are available there. But we are going to use here just a VGG16. And the input shape here for a VGG16, I'm going to use here what we are currently using 224 cross 224 cross 3, 224 cross 224 height and width of your image, and then 3 channel. Thereafter, I say here include underscore top is equal to false so what happens here when i do that then in vgg16 network these top layers we are going to just discard because these top layers are responsible for the classification all right so that part is actually that part is actually uh, you know discarded there and uh, thereafter i'm writing here what type of the weights you want here I want the image net weight. All right. After doing all these, your VGG16 models are ready. And if you write here model underscore VGG16 dot summary, you should be able to see the model summary here. Alright, so this is the model summary. In this model summary, we have a first layer as the input layer. Thereafter, the two convolutional layer with the filter size of the 64. And then we have here a max pooling and so on. So this is what we had seen earlier as well. And this time we have total 14. Uh, there we have just a 14 million parameters here. Alright, let's go ahead and... Uh, we start building our model here. Now, as I told you earlier that for these initial layers, we do not need to train our model. We need to extract these features as it is. So for that purpose, I need to make here for layers, for layer in model VGG16 dot layers. layer dot trainable is equal to false here once i do these then it is going to make all these initial layer of your model non trainable all right after doing all these those parameters are going to be the non trainable now Alright, so after doing all these, now we have to see here, you can clearly see that now these parameters are non-trainable parameter. We have already set there the trainable is equal to false. And there are just zero number of parameters which is being trainable. Now we need to build the top model. So I write here the model is equal to sequential. Thereafter, I write here the model dot add and then model VGG16. Thereafter, I do here model dot add and then I do here a flatten layer. So what I'm doing here, I'm taking the first these layers of your uh, of this VGG16 model. Thereafter, I'm adding here our own flatten layer. Then we will be adding here our own dense layer. So I write here dense layer and 512 only the 512 neurons we are going to use one more thing if you see here we are getting less number of the parameters because these dense layer are not included most number of the parameter comes from the dense layer itself so i'm using here dense layer of 512 and uh, activation method i'm going to use here relu activation method after doing all these, I'm do, gonna do here model dot add and thereafter 
I'm going to add here 0 0.5. That's the 50% of the dropout. Thereafter, I write here the model dot add and then the dense layer. I have here a five neurons and then the activation method is equal to softmax. All right. So this five says that we have total five number of classes, which is going to be used for the output. Then we have activation here, the softmax. All right. Once all these things happen, let's go ahead and run our model and print the model summary here. If you do like this model dot summary, we are going to see more number of the parameters. So these parameter we had already set as non trainable parameter. So these are only trainable parameter. So there are 12 million, almost 13 million of the parameter, which are trainable parameters. Let's go ahead and compile our model. I write here model dot compile and thereafter this loss method I'm going to use here cross uh, sorry I'm going to use here uh, categorical cross entropy and then I'm going to use here the optimizer as the Adam optimizer and then the matrix I'm going to use here accuracy. Thereafter, I'm going to store the history of our model training model dot history is equal to the model dot pit. Thereafter, I write here train underscore uh, generator. Thereafter, I write here number of epochs is equal to five. And then we write here validation data is equal to validation generator. All right, let's go ahead and run this whole thing and uh, our model training will start and you will see there these accuracy will jump quickly to the higher values what we had seen earlier. So in earlier for five epochs, we had seen almost 68, 69 percent of accuracy, but using the transfer learning, we should be able to achieve here a better accuracy. Let's go ahead and wait for five epochs and then see how much accuracy we can achieve with the five epochs. All right, so the five epoch training is done. Now we can clearly see that our validation accuracy has reached to almost 77 and uh, our training accuracy is still around 69%. So our model is overfitting. If you train it for 50 epochs, you would be able to definitely get like 90% of accuracy or even more accuracy. So for your personal purpose, you can train it for 50 epochs and then you can see that how much accuracy you are getting. Other than that, you can also try out some other models, pre-trained weights so that you can increase its accuracy even more better. Let's go ahead and save this model. Model save is very easy process. In previous lectures, I have been telling this multiple times how you can save your model and then how you can use it for later purpose. I say here flower classifier dot h5. That's all you need to do your model is saved here in your current directory and then you can download your model simply. All right. Thereafter, you can load your model. If you want to use this model on your local disk, local directory or local computer or from here itself or anywhere, you need, you need to just have this flask classifier dot h5. If you have flask classifier dot h5, let's say you load it into a flask model then you can say here simply like uh, tf dot I have already imported the tensorflow so tf dot keras dot models dot load underscore model in that you can just simply write this whole thing here you can load your model so this flars model is loaded here all right, you can check this flask summary as well. This is the same model what we had there, exactly the same model. These are non-trainable parameters and these are only trainable parameters here. So this flars.summary, I mean this flars model you can use for the prediction as well. Let's go ahead and write a quick code for the prediction. So I'm going to use here uh, OpenCV here. So for that purpose, I'm going to import OpenCV 
and so that I can read the images directly uh, here. So I write here import CV2. This is going to uh, import OpenCV uh, library. Then I say here IMG is equal to CV2. In previous lectures, I have shown you the Keras pre-processing utility tool to read the image. Here I am telling you some other methods so that you can learn all these methods together. Thereafter, I'm just going to take any of these images for the training, uh, for the classification purpose. I randomly selected here the sunflowers. You check there. This sunflower image is I'm going to take there for our training purpose. I, I mean, for the testing purpose, I just copy this path and I provide it here. So this is the sun, sunflower image. Then I, I, I say here, IMG is equal to CV2 dot resize I need to resize this image to 224 cross 224 thereafter I also need to reshape our image so that we can make this two channel image into the three channel image so anyway this is already three channel here I'm just setting height and the width and this is already a three channel image but now I need to make it into a four channel image all right, so I write here np dot uh, reshape. Thereafter, I pass here img and then the shape of the image. I'm going to pass here 1 cross 224, 224 and 3. So this is height and width. This is number of channels and this is say this one is saying that the total number of images. So there is just a single image. That is why we are having just a single row there. Thereafter, we are going to normalize our image. So I write here IMG divided by 255. So our image normalization is done here. Thereafter, I write here preds is equal to flowers dot predict. And then here I write IMG. Now you can see there this preds there. If you just print these preds, you should be able to see here a particular, uh, uh, this one is having here a maximum value. So probably your output is this one. But how would you know that your output is this one? So for that one, you have to get the max index. So I get here the max IDX. Max IDX is equal to NP dot org max. Thereafter, I pass here the preds and then you see their max IDX. So the max IDX should be here a three. Let's go ahead and get the class indices and based on that class indices, we will be able to get the class of this output. So that I can get with the train generator. I write here train generator dot class indices. If you do like that, then at the third place, you should be able to see here a sunflower. So that's how it is doing there. Let's go ahead and convert it into a key value pair a positive key value pair in fact so i'm going to just write here a for loop for key and value in this in this dictionary i write here as the items and then i write here v and k something like this if i run it like this you should be able to get it something like there so i say it as class indices is equal to like this so in this class indices, if you pass this max IDX, you should be able to get the class name of your image. Now you can see it's a sunflowers. Similarly, you can test it for others as well. I'm just going to put everything together so that you can uh, predict here. If you change this to something else, let's say you want to see some roses perhaps. You have this, this roach and you just right click and get the copy path there. All right, so this is the roaches. Let's go ahead and run it. You should be able to see there. This has predicted it as roaches. Previously, I had also shown you how you can, uh, how you can do the classification uh, through the online images as well. You need to watch the previous lectures where I used the requests library to download online images for the prediction. 
So this video completes here. I'm sure you must have learned a lot here in this lecture. If you have liked this video, please subscribe this channel and share this channel on social media and with your friends. Thank you so much. I'll see you in next one.